Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Learning to excel. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Learning to excel. You can blame you backslash gambat for this one. I was idly browsing the Encyclopedia Moronica, and a post there reminded me of this story. The tale this time takes place somewhat later in my employment misery, when I was at XYZ Incorporated. This happened right at the beginnings of the tendering process for the big contract that's the backdrop to the tale of the absent phone line this post. That post, and the one before it, also have a bit more background on what XYZ Incorporated actually did. So. I worked for XYZ Incorporated, who made stuff and sold it to people. Stuff was hard to do and had massive potential liabilities if you got it wrong, so XYZ Incorporated had a very small number of competitors either locally or worldwide. All these clever folk was very protective of their IP, and so the patent situation meant that equivalent machinery actually tended to have precious little in common about how its guts did things until it spat out the functionally identical, end product. Worldwide, there were maybe a few dozen serious customers for such wondrous machines, two or three hundred total, if you counted the small fry who bought just one machine every decade or so. End result was that XYZ Incorporated's main clientele was a specialist field with a big minimum buy-in, so everyone pretty much knew everyone. So ABC Corporation had finally admitted that the large plot of land they'd acquired out by the highway wasn't actually going to be a public park for the enjoyment of workers at some random industrial zone, but was in fact the site of planned shiny new factory, which would eventually likely replace the shabby old factory they currently had in the middle of a housing subdivision. At this point, there wasn't anything approaching a specification for what they wanted to achieve, or even building plans. Just a clear understanding amongst the industry suppliers that big money, TM, was about to be spent, and that whoever got the lion's share of shiny new factory was going to win big, as long as they didn't shoot themselves in the foot. XYZ Incorporated Sort of only stood to gain here, because historically we'd had a pretty minimal presence on ABC Corp's current factory floor the sales director had managed to get the job of renewing one production line at shabby old factory relatively recently, and it was chugging away cranking out product in a corner, but that was it. Shrewd readers will already have surmised that this machinery deal was the result of someone at ABC Corporation getting themselves some practical experience with our kid ahead of tender time, which at least meant we had a chance. But sort of only gain is a double-edged sword, and if we didn't get a good chunk of business in shiny new factory, not only were we likely walled out for a decade or so, but we were distinctly vulnerable the next time one of our existing big accounts had a machinery replacement cycle and some competitor of ours came along with a sweet deal. Of course, if we did win big at ABC Corporation whichever of our competitors lost out would immediately have a very good incentive to offer a sweet deal somewhere else, but that's life. XYZ Incorporated's go-to employee when it came to shooting ourselves in the foot was senior sales rep who, by a happy coincidence, and mostly by dint of being senior, had recently been gifted the ABC Corporation. Account following the retirement of the former sales director who'd actually made the sale. Shortly after the news of shiny new factory broke, a meeting was called in the Situation Room at XYZ Incorporated HQ. This was genuinely important, so had quite the roll call. Senior sales rep explained the significance and scope of the task ahead. ABC Corporation have bought some land and might be building a shiny new factory. They sat down again. What else do we know? asked CEO. At a recent corporate shunt round, it had been determined that there was one too many directors, and so the sales director hadn't been replaced when they retired, and the sales force now reported to the regional CEO, who had also been fairly recently parachuted in, so they were still getting familiar with the local niceties. Not much. What does shabby old factory produce? Product. I know that. I meant how many product a year? What sizes and how many of each? Will the new place run to three or four shift? 
Are they interested in lines to manufacture any new sizes? Will shiny new factory eventually completely replace shabby old factory? Is it planned to be bigger capacity, if so how much? Dunno. Don't think we stand much chance anyway. The CEO expressed the view that it might not do us any harm to try anyway, and the assembled company then spent the rest of the meeting devising a comprehensive list of information we'd like to know about ABC Corp's current operations and future plans, which data CEO then instructs senior sales rep to apply themselves to finding out. The next meeting is set for a month's time, and in the meantime, sundry senior staff including the writer find, or have found for them, reasons to go to shabby old factory and make friends. Next month, another meeting is duly held with the same cast and crew. There is now, thanks partly to senior sales rep and mostly to a cast of extras, some data on what shabby old plant has produced and who for over the last two or three years. Along with published financials and marketing's asterisk analysis of what ABC Corporation must be making for other people, we at least have a starting point. There's also an artist's impression of shiny new factory looming over its environs, and the plan is for big and gray it seems. About a 25% gray with a matte finish on the manufacturing section and 45% gray satin with tinted windows for the offices. Very dapper. Asterisk a somewhat misnamed department. There was some generic marketing material, but like I said, it was a pretty closed industry. So marketing's primary function was to analyze our overall market by working backwards from what our customers and their customers were selling, especially if they weren't using our machines to produce it. We sift through this data, trends are guessed at, various opinions offered and debated and not much was actually agreed upon except a need to keep up visibility and get as much more information as possible. There's nothing in the data we can't make, but not enough detail to consider producing a tender, even if ABC Corporation had asked us for one. Senior sales rep once again expresses the opinion that we shouldn't bother. Why? asks the CEO. Because PQR Holdings machines are better than ours. Better efficiency and they cost 30% less than ours to run. It's a done deal. Really, says the CEO, is it that bad? The CFO, technical director and service manager also almost simultaneously add their own opinions on this, which are rubbish, b asterisk ll asterisk ck's and b asterisk llsh asterisk t respectively. Where on earth are you getting that from, asks technical director. ABC Corp's CFO has made a financial model of the PQR machines and ours running costs, and that's the result. Ours are way more expensive. And this is based on what data? I've never heard any customer anywhere say they had anything approaching the difference between anybody's machines. Even PQR's sales flyers don't claim half that. Well, ABC Corporation have got both kinds of machines, they'd know. Spoiler alert, no they f asterisk king wouldn't, not if you walked up and smacked them in the face with it. Can you, says the CFO diplomatically, get us a copy of this financial model, so we can see where we're going so badly wrong? Well, I have faith in you, senior sales rep, adds the CEO, we'll have another meeting to look at the model when you've got it. To be fair, a couple of weeks later, senior sales rep announces that they do now have ABC Corp's production cost financial model, given them by ABC Corp's CFO. The model proves to be an Excel sheet, with half the data and all calculations tucked away on protected and hidden sheets. After checking that senior sales rep did indeed acquire it legitimately, the file is passed to the in-house IT to asterisk mon, who unhides the interesting bits and mails it back. We have another meeting. The spreadsheet is put up on the OHP, and we run through it, first a general look-see at the structure, then we go back to the top so that we can go into the detail. Turns out service manager's assessment was wrong, actually it's total h asterisk resesh asterisk t. It's not even that's it was unfair, or a bit stacked in PQR holdings favor, the thing was just drivel. Basic data was grab bag of numbers, some blank, some obviously wrong. Different calculations were applied to work out the allegedly parallel values on different machines, often all of them wrong. Where a particular calculation didn't give a convenient answer, 
the result cell was often then overwritten with a more desirable value. The most common PQR machine was assumed to run the same end product constantly at high efficiency with minimal servicing, ours was changing products every couple of hours and losing half a shift to cleaning. The spreadsheet got torn to pieces by everybody from technical and finance. At the beginning the head accountant started taking notes on the errors, but rapidly gave up when said notes were taking up a page for every few lines of the original file. I'm not sure ABC Corp's CFO is going to be pleased when they hear XYZ Incorporated doesn't like their figures, was senior sales rep's sole comment at the end of all this. And you're not going to tell them, says CEO. We need our own version first. How long will it take to correct this, CFO? There's nothing there worth saving beyond a couple of column headings, you're better off starting fresh. How long to do that? We can't. It's year end, and we're still halfway through due diligence on JK Limited. No one except the routine business, clerks and accounts has time, and they don't know enough about this side of the business. I think Ojoy should be okay to do it though. Ojoy, how long will it take you? This was the CEO again. About three weeks for a first pass at that level of detail, given what else I've got on at the minute. And that's just for the calculations I can put in our machine data and what PQR stuff we have, but there's big gaps, and I wouldn't trust anything here. Can't you do it faster? Not without unloading or delaying something else. If I ignore monthly thing and just roll it with next month's and someone else can take over. Other thing that doesn't t look like much fun, two weeks should be doable. But I still need the data and time to think it through. Technical director nods assent and service manager realizes they've just been volunteered for, other thing that doesn't t look like much fun. Good, says the CEO back here, two weeks today, same time. Senior sales rep, liaise with Ojoy and start sourcing whatever extra information on PQR machines we need. So I start building my model. You might suggest that two weeks is a long time, but dash. One, I still have plenty of other sh asterisk t to do, and. Two, I'm not just modeling the cost of running our machine, but the whole factory. Upstream processes, downstream conveyoring and machines, utilities, cleaning and product changeover cycles, how many many and how skilled humans are needed to look after all this, the whole nine yards. What about material wastage? Servicing costs? If our size 5 widgeter is faster than PQR holdings equivalent that looks like a win, but does that extra throughput mean our version needs more capable, i.e. bigger and more expensive, machines upstream to feed it raw materials, with similar downstream issues in taking the product away? Does that all mean a bigger building and more staff to look after those even if the core machine is about the same size etc? You get the idea. And the need for competitor data was real we had spec. Sheets, I could tell you how big and heavy they were, and their nominal production capacity, but a supply requirement that says 20 kilowatts peak electrical load doesn't tell you how much the average daily power consumption really is. Or how accurate a figure PDQ holdings reps are quoting. And then there's the imponderables like operating efficiency and product change over times. The customer's CFO had one thing right. My preferred tool for this kind of sh asterisk t is Excel in the end all of this was simple maths and logic tree decision making, just one hell of a layer cake with maybe 200 interrelated variables. Excel laps that up no problem, it's easy to dig into the detail as required, update it when you need to, and oh yes everybody's PC can run it. So I started out with a piece of paper. I wrote down everything I could think of affecting the operating costs of a factory with our machines. The paper was turned into a Word document and was further expanded. Then I took my Word document and went to see the CFO, and they and I, plus chief accountant, went through it and added some more. Now I can sit down to write my spreadsheet. After a couple of days' work, I take it back to CFO, and we run through all the parts that have parallels with our own factory costs. Chief accountant is called in. Alterations are suggested and made, along with subdividing a couple of plant variables. A whole section on the option of leasing versus purchase costs gets added. 
Similar discussions are held with technical director, service manager, and stores manager. At the start of all of this I also sit down with marketing manager and senior sales rep and go over what input data I need to drive calculations. Basically proper tech specs on the competitor's machines and their consumable costs so that the spreadsheet can accurately compare them with ours. Halfway through writing, I meet up with the two again. Marketing manager produces a sheaf of data and while it's a starting point, since they have a, mostly, non-customer-facing role it's mostly gleaned from the darker depths of PQR's public documentation and hence on the optimistic side. No fault of theirs, it's what they could reasonably get, and still a good jumping-off point to add to what we already had. Senior sales rep has nothing to add and therefore attempts to take credit for marketing manager's work. After marketing manager has finished ripping senior sales rep's head off, the two of us attempt, once again, to get senior sales rep to understand what it is they are supposed to be doing and why it's actually important. As will be seen, we probably failed in this endeavor. We definitely fail to understand what senior sales rep has been doing with their time recently and why on earth they regard it as having been remotely useful. Another week or so passes. I still have no data from senior sales rep, who now promises it will be available the day of the meeting so I use marketing manager's public domain data to run the PQR sections of the finished spreadsheet and add a bunch of scalars to tune it with. Best I can do under the circumstances. Then I take the spreadsheet back to CFO for a look-see. They seem happy and volunteer nothing else they want added, so I'm as ready as I can be for the next meeting. I cut and paste a duplicate calculation with blank entry fields so that, in the unlikely event of senior sales rep producing any useful data, we can enter it and see what the results look like compared to the rest. The meeting duly happens, same bunch as before, and I present my spreadsheet, complete with marketing manager's numbers and associated tuning cells. I've had no chance to check slash input the promised data from senior sales rep, they've been running radio silent and only turned up on site minutes before the meeting. I run through the calculations, using a couple of our own machines, and the differences between them, for illustrative purposes. Then I go over the PQR equivalents, crediting marketing managers' work in finding the source numbers and explaining my scalars and fudge factors that attempt to make them more representative of actual production. Wasn't Air, senior sales rep getting the customer to give us accurate data for PQR holdings machines, asks CEO. Senior sales rep leans forward. Yeah, I've got that. Oh, Joy only needed to ask for it. Before I can reply, marketing manager speaks up. Oh, Joy did ask you for it. At the meeting last week. I was there too, if you remember. And at the other meeting a week before that. Senior sales rep looks shifty. More so than usual. If you have the data, can you just put it in the spreadsheet now please, asks CEO with a slightly pained expression. The laptop that's currently hooked up to the OHP and running the spreadsheet is passed across the table for senior sales rep to use. What happens next is literally jaw-dropping. After being persuaded not to overwrite randomly chosen cells in the calculations for our own machines, senior sales rep's cursor settles on the set of semi-blank calculating columns intended for the PQR data. At the top of each column is a title cell for the machine name, currently blank. Below that, of course, are the actual data input cells. Senior sales rep tabs across the row, filling in the type name of a PQR machine at the top of each column. Once they've done half a dozen different names, they push the laptop away, lean back and fold their arms. CEO stares at them. CFO stares at them. Everyone F asterisk King stares at them. Is that it, says CFO. Yes. There's no data, senior, that's just a list of machine types. And two of them are, unrelated to ABC Corp's business, there's no way they've ever used those types anyway. And? Where is the data? Any fool can copy a machine name out of a brochure. That's the computer's job to fill in. That's what computers do. CFO looks away from the screen, obviously planning to seek verification or denial of this somewhat unusual assertion. 
At this point I still have my mouth open in utter disbelief, to the degree of being at risk of accidentally swallowing apples whole if I happen to suddenly go bobbing for them, and marketing manager, who has both more years of service and frequent interactions with senior sales rep behind them, has their head on the table and appears to be attempting to hide it from view using their forearms and a small notepad. CFO decides the point might be moot and wisely doesn't waste their breath. CEO then promptly adjourns the meeting before there's any actual bloodshed. About five minutes later I get an email from CEO's PA, copied to everyone except senior sales rep, and inviting us all to another meeting in the boardroom. Now. At which meeting the assembled cast then debate strategies for obtaining the needed information on ABC Corp's operations via other contacts. Given they were the nominal accountant manager, senior sales rep had surprisingly little involvement in big project after that. They did, of course, immediately give the spreadsheet to ABC Corp's CFO, who passed it on to PQR Holdings' local salesperson within the week. A few months later senior sales rep took early retirement and was replaced by sales rep who sees the whole picture. I liked them much better. Such is life.